In my time game reviewing, you may have noticed that I'm a huge fan of story, world building, and character development. So you might be asking, why are you reviewing Neo 2? And that's a fair question. Neo is kind of known for its flimsy story, if I could be nice. And Neo 2 is similar in that regard. From what I can gather, it's a story about you, a yokai, which is a spirit demon human thing, who's battling evil yokai in feudal Japan. And that's about it for the story. Even the character itself doesn't seem to have much development. You're kind of just a silent avatar that inhabits this world that is pretty shallow, to put it nicely. And if the narrative wasn't the strongest, why would a person like me, who loves narrative, want to pick up Neo 2? Well, I gotta say that the star of Neo 2, its combat system, really drove me to continue playing this game. There are so many different ways to play this game, like, it's hard to even describe. You have about 15 different weapons you can use. Oh! I like that. Each weapon can be customized based on this wildly expansive skill chart that you have. And on top of that, there are different weapon stances that you can use whether that's forward, kind of backward, sideways, so that the way in which you use the weapons is different in the game in terms of timing, in terms of how it hits, how powerfully it hits. Pretty cool. And right there, that combat system is totally unique within this genre of game. But while there are these multiple customization and battle options within the combat system, they all coalesce so nicely around the combat itself. Wow, are these battles tough? Let me tell you, oh. I died, I'm dead, and died, and died again, and then I thought I had a chance, but then promptly died, and then finally beat the boss, only to realize that that wasn't the final boss. And then die. Oh shit. Only to have to fight them again, and die. But every time I died, I gained a little more. More experience, more levels, more control of my own character, more knowledge. Every time I faced the monsters that killed me last, I felt I had a chance to win. And even when I didn't, even when I was so frustrated, I felt confident every time that this time would be the time that I would win. And based on this difficulty that I'm describing, it might be easy to compare Neo 2 with the Dark Souls games, and there have been a lot of these comparisons out there. In a lot of ways, the Soulsborne game popularized this extreme difficulty and repetition as a key factor to advancing to the next checkpoint, to the next level, to the next boss. But I think there's a key difference between Neo 2 and the Soulsborne games that drives someone like me, again, someone who loves narrative, into Neo 2 and not necessarily into the Soulsborne world. And this is kind of what these games take as difficulty. Neo 2 is a tough game for sure, but it's not a tough game in the way that it feels unfair. The Soulsborne game always felt like you were fighting the game, whether that's a control scheme or seemingly overpowered monsters that come out of nowhere. And learning their movements don't really help at times. You kind of feel like you're just hitting a wall until one time it just suddenly works. Neo 2, on the other hand, has fine-tuned these mechanics, making it feel like you're battling yourself. Whether you have the skills, the resource management, the timing, and the ability to read enemy movements. The game is unforgiving. Every battle is unforgiving, but not unfair, which makes it so rewarding when things start to click. Neo 2's take on difficulty focuses on the rewards of the battle system, rather than frustrations that come from said difficulty. It makes coming back to the game more enjoyable, each mission more exciting than the last, every boss battle a thrill to experience. Holy shit. Narrative or not, the battling drives the game forward and makes it a game worth looking at. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah! <laughs> 